Then he pats down his face with the same soiled towel that now harbors a frightening bacterium. It came from someone who previously used the equipment. The menacing microbe has been deposited on a small razor abrasion on the man's face. The organism naturally penetrates the skin through the cut. Within days, a single cell of this bacterium reproduces into thousands of bacterial cells, which release toxins to suppress the immune system in order to continue multiplying. Nasty boils ignite on the victim's face as white blood cells battle the bacteria and toxins. During this microbial conflict, some bacteria can infiltrate the bloodstream where they cause a variety of life-threatening problems. You name the organ in the human body, Staph aureus can infect it. It's probably the most versatile pathogen. It's the jack of all trades in humans. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, better known as MRSA or MRSA, is a super strain of staph. Unlike the bacterium group A strep, MRSA is far more prevalent and deadly. A new CDC report estimates that more Americans died from infections caused by MRSA than from HIV AIDS in 2005. Nearly 19,000 lost their lives from MRSA compared to 17,000 from HIV AIDS. Bacteria are among the smallest and oldest living organisms. They're single-celled creatures that will eat almost anything to survive and produce offspring. So humans are oftentimes the main course. Bacteria can be deadly, mostly in the sense that they can be opportunistic to using us as resources. So in this way, bacteria can harness toxins to blow open our cells and to liberate precious resources that are available inside of our cells and using them for bacterial growth. MRSA first appeared in hospitals in the 1960s. There, it could easily be transmitted due to the abundance of broken skin, cuts, and wounds where it could enter the body. Now, a new strain called community-acquired MRSA is spreading disease almost everywhere humans come in contact with each other. So now, no one is safe from its wrath. We don't know exactly where it came from. It probably came from one organism, one Staphylococcus bug that picked up this genetic element and happened to be able to spread it efficiently. And it looks like that's been happening repeatedly throughout the world. The community-acquired strain of MRSA has been commonly found among athletes in sports involving skin-on-skin -skin contact that often causes cuts and wounds. MRSA is known as a superbug because it's resistant to the commonly used antibiotics, including methicillin, a form of penicillin made from the fungus penicillium. So this makes it challenging to treat. There's just some antibiotics left that are second-line antibiotics that aren't used very often that will treat it. But physicians like keeping those antibiotics in their back pocket for the serious infections. And the problem is if physicians give everyone these ones we're saving in our back pocket, what happens the bacteria will just mutate. And this is to be the story of antibiotic resistance. A microorganism is antibiotic resistant when it can withstand the effects of antibiotics by, among other things, changing its surface structure. And the rise of antibiotic resistant bacteria like MRSA may actually come from our overuse of antibiotics. We give the organism a reason to develop resistant traits. And part of that is what we call selective pressure. So in areas where people are receiving large amounts of antibiotics, it gives that particular organism who's resistant to the antibiotic a chance to thrive. And that's generally how we'll see resistance emerge. Antibiotic resistance can be transmitted between bacteria when two different bacteria engage in a form of microbial mating with each other. During this process, they can exchange DNA, a nucleic acid that houses the genetic blueprint of all organisms, and some of this DNA carries antibiotic resistant genes. The rise of antibiotic resistant bacteria like MRSA has heightened fears that the conflict against our microbial adversaries is escalating. Unless new drugs are developed, 
humans will constantly be dodging bullets. I think MRSA is going to be very difficult to eradicate. What we've seen is it's a cat and mouse game with us developing antibiotics and the bacteria becoming resistant to it. So far, we've not won this game. MRSA is by far one of the scariest germs. But there's another stealthy organism that uses an accomplice to attack. Some nasty germs have traveled halfway around the world to inflict global diseases. And now, one is just inches outside your front door. Warm summer nights bring people outdoors to cool off. But lurking in the dark, an enemy is ready to inject a lethal sting. Number eight, West Nile virus. A mosquito lands on a woman's arm. It injects its saliva into her skin while sucking out blood for nourishment. But within this mosquito's saliva is a virus, an organism whose only mission in life is to make more viruses, ones that can make you deathly ill. The woman thinks she only sustained an itchy, swollen bite. However, the virus has entered her body. Unlike bacteria, viruses don't have cellular mechanisms to reproduce on their own. So the West Nile virus quickly infiltrates an immune cell and hijacks its metabolic machinery to replicate. The virus multiplies to the point that its offspring burst open the cell, flooding the bloodstream with new viruses that move on to attack other cells. In a small percentage of individuals, the sea of viruses then enters the brain, where they cause swelling so severe that the brain literally pushes against the skull, causing a painful death. One in 150 people who develop a reaction to West Nile virus will have a severe reaction. 10% of those people won't survive. And there's really not a whole lot we can do to prevent that other than just hospital supportive care. The West Nile virus was first discovered in the African country of Uganda in 1937. Since its arrival in the United States in the late 1990s, West Nile has taken close to a thousand lives with no end in sight. And what's more, there's no cure currently available. The West Nile virus is commonly found in Africa, but the killer microbe has now migrated across the globe. Initially, 61 people contracted the virus in New York, probably via an infected animal transported in some form of modern transportation. Seven of them died. The virus was also identified in the tissue of several crows. Birds are a natural host for the virus because they're everywhere in the world and can travel great distances. Mosquitoes draw blood from an infected bird and then inject it into healthy birds, thereby spreading the disease. Birds are prevalent everywhere and birds fly and mosquitoes also migrate. So if an infected bird moves from one area to another and an uninfected mosquito then feeds on that bird, then you'll have an infected mosquito population in a new